Saints News Network's John Hendricks joins the show today to talk Michael Thomas, Brian Poole, and New Orleans Saints training camp. We got all that on today's episode of Locked On Saints. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdat Nation and Houdat family? Welcome in to another episode of Locked On Saints, a daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints, part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day. On today's episode, we are joined by John Hendricks at John J. Hendricks on Twitter, part of Saints News Network over at Sports Illustrated. We're going to be talking a bit about Michael Thomas, who's going to fill in his shoes and who's going to take advantage of the opportunities now during training camp. And then we're going to talk about the recent signing of the new New Orleans Saints cornerback, Brian Poole. Where does he fill a need? How does he shuffle the secondary and more thoughts on the secondary as a whole with John. And then we're going to wrap up with a little bit of a preview for training camp, offense, defense, and names to watch as we get closer and closer to camp getting underway on Thursday. As always, I'm your host, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter, co-managing editor over at CanalGChronicles.com, your Tuesday co-host over at the National Locked on NFL podcast. We get all that and a little bit of land yet for you as John Hendricks joins on today's episode of Locked on Saints. All right, John, so let's go ahead and pick it up here with the Michael Thomas story to start us off. So in case anyone by any chance has missed it, uh, this has been a huge story for the New Orleans Saints. He's going to be unavailable to begin the 2021 season. A lot of reports coming out a little bit early saying that it was going to be around five games. Now we hear that he might be moved to the physically unable to perform list, or uh, it sounds like Ian Rapport was actually pretty sure that that was happening. What can you tell us from your perspective in terms of this Michael Thomas situation and how it's going to affect the team going into this season? Yeah, look, it's a tremendous blow to start. I mean, you know, I, I think this kind of goes back to June in minicamp when Sean Payton, we were asked about Michael Thomas and look, he was kind of, I want to say candid with his answer, but you know, look, he was alluded to that, you know, that's kind of where the hint came that Mike might not be a hundred percent, right? Mm-hmm. He's talking about so far so good with the ankle talking about how he was getting tested every day and such. And, and look, you know, um, that kind of raised an eyebrow there. And look, this offense needs him in there. And, you know, it's a brutal blow because you lose Emmanuel Sanders in free agency. And now this injury and, and obviously he's got surgery and such now, um, you know, after kind of ducking the second opinion and such, but you're looking at a 12 to 16 week time frame, roughly is what, what we're learning about it. You know, that's from his June surgery. So not 12, 16 weeks the yes. season, right? There's right. people just can't do basic <laughs> math, I guess, you know what I mean? Or basic calendar. So again, it looks on, it's all about his rehab because obviously the ligaments, the bones, all of that stuff has got to heal first. Right. And then you got to make sure that you, as a receiver, you can do your cuts, you can do your routes, you can do all the things. And assuming there's no setbacks, you know, I mean, Mike's a young guy. He takes care of himself and his body. Um, uh, you know, hopefully he's back there sooner rather than later, as Sean would like to say. But, you know, it's going to be one of those wait and see type things. And look, I think given how the Saints season folds, unfolds, it's probably going to be more beneficial to have him in that midpoint back half of the season, especially with that 17th game added. Uh, you know, you talked a little bit about the production that he brings. And of course, he's been able to do that with any quarterback that's throwing him the ball. Who are some of the guys that you would expect some of that production to kind of run through for those first, let's say, five games of the season without Michael Thomas? Yeah, look, I, I remember last year we were going into the game with little Jordan Humphrey and Juwan Johnson. I mean, yeah. it's it, we've been there, right? And so <laughs> uh, obviously you're going to have Traquan Smith, and every year it seems like he's the guy to break out and all this stuff. But this guy's also not put up 500 yards receiving in his career yet. And right. so he's going into a contract year, hopefully goes off like Trey Hendrickson, and this begins up being a really killer year for him. And now I think that actually bodes well for James Winston in the quarterback competition because they've been doing a lot of offseason workouts and such. So I really expect him to to really be that guy as of right now. Marquez Callaway's coming back. Obviously, he had a great rookie season. Uh, one of those guys that they just they find a way. They just get these undrafted guys, whether it's on offense or defense, like Malcolm Roach or Shy Tuttle or all these guys that end up coming in and, and such. So obviously, he's going to have a bigger role. 
then that's kind of where you start getting this kind of a little bit of question mark because sure. maybe it's Deontay Harris, but I don't know if he's going to give up return duties. You got rookie mm-hmm. and Kawan Baker. That's a guy that could potentially take some relief on those return duties. I expect him to be active in training camp, doing some of those kick returns, punt returns. Big in South Alabama when he did that, obviously. But look, that's the question mark is those are the guys that seem like the front runners. I expect Adam Troutman to have a really big role, even larger role now, too. But, you know, that's in-house what your options are. There's tons of people on the day depth chart. But it's all unproven, guys. Like McCleskey is a guy that you got to watch out for. Jawan Johnson's making a, a move to tight end. You got little Jordan Humphrey coming back, obviously. I mean, you know, the sky's the limit and the opportunity's there for a lot of people on this roster in training camp. But those are the guys that we're looking at. Now, on the outside perspective, I was big on D.D. Westbrook, Westbrook even before, yeah. you know, the, the Vikings signed him. That was something I thought that he would be a really great off, uh, offensive ad. But now he gets to the Vikings. Maybe look at Kenny Stills. I've seen some crazy reports out there tying it, which, I mean, I guess if that's the, where they're at, desperate enough. But I think there's free agents out there. There's still Golden Tate. There's see what Larry Fitzgerald's going to do. If you're really mm-hmm. desperate, Des Bryant can come back in. I there mean, if they're really in that spot. But I do know that this team has, has preached a lot about how much they love their receivers, how much mm-hmm. they value the team, the chemistry that they have. It's just got to show up you know, when it counts. And so there may be some growing pains, but at the same time, they may bring in a couple of guys to try out. I would fully expect that, but look, you know, we'll see who it is. It may not be the big names everybody on Saints Twitter wants to clamor for. Yeah, absolutely. And that kind of happened with the cornerback position as well. A lot of uh, names that have been thrown around like Steven Mm -hmm. Nelson, who just ended up today signing with the Philadelphia Eagles. You also look at you know, a couple of the other corners that have been available on the market. It's not necessarily one of those guys. They ended up going with Brian Poole coming up next. We're going to talk a bit more about that signing, what it can mean for the Saints secondary coming up here in the 2021 season as we continue on with another episode of Locked on Saints. The New Orleans Saints are getting ready for training camp. John's getting ready for training camp. We're all getting ready for training camp. And so too should you with seven open practices that are going to be available for Saints fans to attend. But also, you should be getting ready to hit the road as well. So if you have any needs for your car, truck, or vehicle, whatever it is that you drive, make sure you head over to rockauto.com to check out what they've got for you and how they can help get you taken care of with whatever it is that you need at low prices that are reliable and uh, stock that's reliable, a website that's easy to navigate, really just checks all the boxes over at rockauto.com. So whatever it is that you need, part piece accessory, whatever it is that you want, to add to your vehicle. Go and check them out at rockauto.com. Just pick your make, model, and year. Let them know what part you're looking for. You'll get several options, all a fraction of the prices which you're going to pay over at those chain stores around the corner. And when you get to your checkout there, don't forget to let them know that Locked On sent you by writing Locked On in the How'd You Hear About Us section. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, and all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. All right, John, let's go ahead and take a look now at the Cornerback position for the New Orleans Saints. We broke down what they could potentially do at wide receiver. The Saints have already made a move over at cornerback. And once again, by the way, if you want to follow John, you can find him on Twitter at John J. Hendricks. And of course, all the great work over at Saints News Network. Uh, so let's take a look at Brian Poole. They add him to this team, five foot ten, no, just a little bit over 190 pounds, pretty close to the usual sort of prototype that the Saints like, but he's a bit more of a slot guy as opposed to an outside guy. Had two great seasons here recently with the New York Jets. Spent some time with the rival Atlanta Falcons as well. How do you feel like he fits in and kind of uh, potentially shuffles up this secondary, if at all? Yeah, look, uh, obviously the first thing that comes to mind with Brian Poole is he's the guy that Drew Brees would put the spin move on to win the game in in the Falcons and all that or get that touchdown. So (laughs) that's who you're dealing with. But, you know, obviously he had a great career, uh, you know, with the Jets. It it really kind of rebounded him. and. You know, and disinterested stuff like that, it's not by mistake, you know what I mean? And right. as far as the interest that they've had in him and such, a, I guess some people are saying, hey, it's a head scratcher because this is a guy that's more of a slot guy. You know, that's probably where you're looking at. You got C.J. Gardner-Johnson, a guy that you just can't keep off the field, right? And so, right. Um, you know, that, that could be interesting in itself. Maybe they give him some looks because, look, the Saints cornerback death is not not great. You know what I mean? Right. And, and, you know, again, we don't know what's going to happen with Marshawn Lattimore. Um, behind him is Patrick Robinson and Ken Crawley, guys that everybody's going to throw on their roster bubble. I don't think Robinson's built to start 17 games for you. I mean, I mm-hmm. think that's some of the, the concerns there, obviously. And then 
Paulson Adebo is just kind of one of those wild cards. I think he's everybody's been really high on him with the draft. I think he has the tools to put it together, and I like what Chris Richard brings to the table as a secondary coach. But, you know, beyond, beyond them, it's just a lot of unknowns. you got Grant Haley as a depth guy, um, probably more of a special teams gunner and jammer role that he's mm-hmm. going to look for. Keith Washington Jr. is a guy that they got undrafted last year. He's going to be another one that you look at. Then you look at kind of the rookies and then just see – what they have with some of these guys that they brought in undrafted for a process, they may hit on them. They may not. So it's going to be one of those wait and see type of things for it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Bryce Thompson out of Tennessee could be that next Tennessee volunteer mm-hmm. to make the rosters an undrafted yeah. free agent. They continue to do that, but you know, it's going to be a long road nonetheless, even for those guys, especially if the saints continue to add free agents as they still have roster space available going in. And as we talked about before with the wide receiver position, you could expect to see some tryouts. It feels like you should probably expect to see more tryouts and more looks at guys at the cornerback position, or am I being a little bit too presumptive there? No, I think you're absolutely spot on. I mean, the thing is, you know, if they add pool, obviously once that becomes finalized, that'll give them 86 on the roster. So, mm-hmm. you know, you got some spaces there. And, and I think that's not necessarily the cornerback that they were talking about. Drake, Patrick makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. given how they've been looking at. I, I think some of this may stem from, hey, we'll see what happens with Marshawn Lattimore because, again, that's right. still not set in stone. And I know everybody's bracing for his suspension. I think he's going to fall under the personal conduct policy. Maybe it's two game suspension. Maybe he appeals and it goes down to one. But, you know, again, if you're on Saints Twitter, if you're a Saints fan, you just kind of brace for the worst there, right? But, right. you know, between that, they need a defensive tackle uh, potentially to bring in, and they're going to look at a wide receiver. So you got some cap space. Obviously, the way camp rolls on right now, you're not going to pay somebody an extraordinary amount of money, but at the same time, you're also still under the top 51 rule in the salary cap. So it gives you a little bit of creativity too. So look, I would expect them to look some ways, um, you know, tryouts are going to be something that you're going to see a lot of, and it may not be the big names, but again, doing your homework early guys like Quan Alexander, Drake or Patrick, Hey, we need you. Let's come down and get you in there. And, and, you know, you always have to not necessarily count for injuries, but you got to have a list ready to go when stuff like this happens. And so hopefully it doesn't come to that. But at the same time, it would not surprise me to see the Saints team bring in a lot of players uh, over the next week, um, especially after these rookies are reported and stuff and kind of get a little bit of valuation. And then Tuesday when vets report and such. So you're going to get to have a good feel for it. But look, they're going to bring in at least a few guys here. And, and a lot of these roster spots, the last five to ten are pretty interchangeable with injuries and just, you know, players that just come on board. Yeah, and especially with the new cut structure going into the preseason this year, five after game one, five more after game two, and then you cut down from 80 to 53 right after that. There's not really a lot of opportunity. Yeah, I mean, that's five. Those are five players that either get cut because they didn't get an opportunity to get on the field in the first preseason week or because they performed poorly. Let me not say poorly, excuse me. Let me not be super diminishing, but didn't perform up to standard over the course of that first week. So it's a really small sample size they have to make that decision around. Yeah, look, and I mean, you know, that's where your your coaches come into play. And it's not just what you see on the film. Uh, I'm say on the field. It's it's what you see on the film. It's how kind of the smarts that you bring and those intangibles that John Payton likes to talk about. And again, you know, it's it's one of those when you go into Saints camp and when you go into this whole entire process, it's not about one position. It's not about this. You've got to have flexibility. You have you see a lot of guys that don't just play one linebacker spot. They get trained at the others. You know, you have to have that versatility that the Saints covet. And, you know, look, um, that's what I expect to see from a lot of these players. And that's kind of, you know, special teams is your your best way to make the roster. And that's where you should get the most look. Um, Guys like Dwayne Washington have done it. You know, Tommy Lee Lewis did it. You know, again, please don't throw stones at me for mentioning his name. But, you know, it's just the bottom line is a lot of these guys make their their way onto the roster. and, And some of it pays off. I mean, Justin Hardy. Junior, I mean, senior, he had cashed in on a big free agent deal with the Jets. And right. then obviously JT Gray got rewarded for the team. So it's not a bad place for, for players to make their presence known. And so, um, you know, even down to the little nuances like Craig Robertson's not on the team. That was 370 plus special teams reps. Now you got it, that opening. So guys like Caden Ellis can jump up and maybe if Zach Bond can't make the, the cut to weak side, maybe that's a spot that he ends up feeling, which is probably not ideal. But look, I mean, that's just the reality of the situation where they're at. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 
So we're going to talk about a little bit more about that, actually, when it comes to special teams guys, guys that are going to be looking to make the roster because we're going to transition here and take a look now at training camp. You're going to be at camp at the New Orleans Saints facility. So we want to talk a little bit about what it is that you're looking forward to seeing once you get uh, to the facility and camp get started in earnest on Thursday. So we'll talk about that and much more as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. All right, y'all, the Olympics are underway. A lot going on. U.S. men's basketball not doing great, but you're seeing some good things elsewhere. We got our first ever U.S. fencing champion. We got our first ever U.S. taekwondo champion. Pretty cool stuff going on. So USA looking pretty good at that over under 42 and a half gold medal count so far. You can also look at the total medal count and much more over at BetOnline. Dot AAG. Such a, a fantastic site to get everything that you need in terms of betting, in terms of odds, everything that you're looking for, whether it's the Olympics, whether it's the NFL, NBA, MLB, otherwise, doesn't matter. They've got you covered over at betonline.ag. So go and check them out. Sign up for a free account today. And when you put down your first deposit so that you can start betting, don't forget to use the promo code locked on, L O C K E D O N. So you can get a 50% welcome bonus on that first deposit over at betonline.ag. Betonline your online sportsbook experts. Let's get it. Who Nation wrapping up today's episode joined by John Hendricks, lead Saints writer and reporter over at Saints News Network, a part of Sports Illustrated. You can follow him on Twitter at John J. Hendricks. John, thanks again so much for joining us for today's episode. Doing a whole episode with me too. He's here for segments one true tree. So I appreciate you being here with us, my man. Oh, no problem, man. I'm glad to do it, man. We uh, we got a lot of commonalities, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. We got a whole lot going on, man. We were chopping it up beforehand, and we chopped it up, of course, with our WDSU appearance not too long ago and just had a great time and knew we wanted to get this in. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I'm so excited about is that you're going to be at New Orleans Saints training camp covering the team, uh, continuing to cover the team as you always are. So what are some of the things that you're most looking forward to? Let's start over on the offensive side. Feels like the quarterback competition is up there. So you can go with the quarterback competition. You can tell us another one, either one, about uh, what it is that you're most looking forward to seeing here in camp. Yeah, look, uh, first of all, I'm just glad to be able to go to practice, right? And I mean, sure. it was last year with COVID, yeah. man, it was just it was tough and it's brutal. And I'm excited to see fans back in the stands with some of the seven open practices they have. But look, offense, the easy choice is Jameis versus Taysom. I mean, that's sure. the easiest thing. But the biggest things that I'm looking for is a couple of things. I think offensive line wise, Cesar Ruiz, we've heard mm -hmm. a lot about how good he's been looking. I really want to see it on the field to see how much of a leap he's been made. Because look, that interior part of the line. We know sometimes it's struggle bus with Andres Pete, but right. look, if they can figure this interior line, we know Eric McCoy's solid, but if Ruiz can make that huge leap in the second year, that's a scary thought to have him paired alongside all pro Ryan Ramchek, who just got that fat contract mm -hmm. extension. So look, suddenly that becomes something that you don't worry about. Adam Troutman, again, looking at him at tight end, and it's not only just him, but I think the guys behind him, you bring Nick Vanette in via free agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to see what he got, uh, what he has to offer. And then the other tight end spot is another thing to keep an eye out on. And obviously the wide receiver battle. Yeah, I'm really curious about that wide receiver spot as well. And I'm curious too to see how some of these younger wide receivers take advantage of the additional opportunity they now get, right? I mean, there's no silver lining to losing Michael Thomas, of course. But these other guys now get uh, a big run at, you know, the number one, you know, the, the uh, first team uh, reps and, and all these other things that maybe they wouldn't have gotten, particularly some of the guys that are, you know, third, fourth in line. Yeah. I mean, that's huge experience for these guys, right? I mean, you look at it, you know, suddenly guys that were going to get second and third team reps, now you're going to get first team reps, mm -hmm. right? And so there's a lot to figure out with this wide receiver battle and look, it's all interchangeable. And so again, you're going to see a lot of those highlight plays and, and such. And, you know, I think about years past when they had guys like Rashard Matthews and Corey oh, yeah. Fuller and everybody thought Rashard Matthews is going to be the guy and he ends up quitting the team. And you got Corey Fuller, who was everybody's training camp champion, if you will. Right. And so, but look, I'm excited to see what, how some of these guys have progressed, especially the guys who worked out with Jameis. I mean, you know, Traquan Smith is a guy that not only has been singled out, but you know, Loomis has been high on him and, I just think that he's in for great things here. And so hopefully you want to believe that and you want to see it happen. Let's uh, flip the page over to the defensive side. What are the things, some of the things you're looking forward to on that side? 
uh, can we say everything, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I, mean, I know. That's what it feels uh, like, right? <laughs> man, I think everything except the safety spot is what you're a little bit concerned right. about, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you start with linebacker. Obviously, you know, Demario Davis is a stud. We know that that's going to be fine, right? And mm-hmm. it's the guy that pairs alongside of him. Um, yeah. You know, Pete Warner was drafted in the second round, 60th overall. So, look, you think he's the guy that's front runner, but then you kind of get a monkey rich thrown in with Juan Alexander visiting. So it's like – Either you want to see what happens there, or I don't, I don't know. There's just something about that, obviously. And then Zach Bond's making the transition to weak side. And the way the Saints run their defense, I mean, again, we talked about C.J. Gardner-Johnson. It's hard to keep him off the field, but they traditionally run just two linebackers on the field at one right. time, usually. So it's just just one of those things that they got to figure out. Um, and, I, again, the competition's wide open, obviously. you got guys like Caden Ellis has been around. Chase Hansen, Winton McManus, obviously, has had a stint in the CFL. I mean, he didn't really get a chance to showcase his stuff. Just so many guys that can come in and maybe make something themselves. And this is a great opportunity to do it. Defensive yeah. line, you know, obviously defensive tackle is the biggest thing with David Animata. He's still going to be there. He's still going to be practicing, obviously, even though he's going to be suspended. But, look, you got to figure out what's going to happen at that role. Shy Tuttle and Malcolm Roach were already going to be the guys that they leaned on to replace Malcolm Brown. But now you have to worry about replacing Anyamata. And at that, there's a couple of schools of thought, I guess. It wouldn't be uncommon to see guys like Cam Jordan rotate inside. Maybe that's what you do with Peyton Turner. And it's not ideal to put a guy like that inside, but you could see it happening. And I think when you talk about the versatility part of it, again, earlier in the show that, look, I wouldn't be surprised if something like that happens. But mm-hmm. you got a lot to figure out there at defensive tackle. Guys like Jalen Dalton. Um, who was doing excellent in camp last year. I'm going to be curious to see how he does this year. And then Ryan Glasgow, he started a couple of games for the Saints or filled in a couple of games, 34 snaps between the Falcons and Broncos in consecutive weeks. So maybe he has a chance to do it. And then obviously there's the intrigue factor, right, with like guys like Lorenzo Neal Jr. Yeah. I, you don't know, but it's a guy that you can root for because of his dad. He got his roots over at New Orleans mm-hmm. and, and such. But – Look, I think those are the two that you look at. And then obviously the cornerback situation. I mean, sure. you just don't know what to expect. And so uh, they could add somebody else to this mix. But realistically, it's always been Lattimore, lockdown Lattimore. And you're hoping you get the best case for him. I think he has a great case this year because obviously you're pay- playing for a contract since you're playing on that fifth year option. And so Ramchek got his money. I don't know what's going to happen with Lattimore now, you know, and, and there's obviously been paired to Xavier and Howard. If the Dolphins were crazy enough to try to trade him, I mean, right. then you would be in a situation where you'd be like, I don't know who I'm going to pay right here. And, you know, and there could be some, some feelings up there and there, but look again, cornerback, second cornerback guy is, is, is who you're going to look and pay attention to. And I don't think they necessarily have the answer readily available on the roster. And, you know, again, they drafted a depot, but, He's going to have to go through his growing pains just like everybody else. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's a guy that hasn't seen the field since November of 2019. So he'll be nearly two years removed from the game by the time that the season begins in terms of full speed playing action and, you know, meaningful reps and all those other things. So I think preseason might be really important for him in addition to camp and classroom, of course. Um, to wrap us up here, we talked about some of the names that might be able to slide in and find roster spots when it comes to special teams. Whether it's special teams or otherwise, are there any under the radar players that you're keeping in mind coming in to training camp for the Saints? Well, I'd say under the radar battle. Obviously, you're going to have a punter battle. It's oh, not I exciting, so but no, I love Nolan it, Cooney, <laughs> Nolan Cooney, and Blake Gillikin. I think Gillikin's got the battle. But again, Same. it's just exciting. I mean, you know, he was doing extremely well last year, right? And, and, mm-hmm. and Thomas Morstead, obviously, he's going to be Saints legend. Uh, Right. For everything that he's done, it wouldn't surprise me to see him go in the Saints ring of honor. Same time as Drew, actually. That'd be mm-hmm. pretty cool for them to do that. But, uh, you know, punter battle is going to be interesting. I think there's, um, from a player's perspective, you know, Jawan Johnson is a guy I think about. A guy making a transition to tight end. There's an opportunity there. You know, he can battle out with Garrett Griffin. And if they keep, you know, obviously, the three tight ends, I think he's got a great chance to do it. And then I think even if if – Everything goes through. Ian Book's another guy I want to look at more. Yeah. I know he's, he's you know, people didn't like the pick, whatever. I could see why they took him. I think Drew had great remarks about him. I think they obviously did their homework. Peyton likes his toughness, his grit. 
how does he perform? I think that's huge. And and again, another rookie that I'm really wanting to look at is Landon Young from Kentucky. Sure. Guys like meat and potatoes guy yeah. that can come in here and be a reserve guy, you know, and uh, between him and just a couple other ones that they've added, you know, <clears throat> maybe not does anything, but Mike Brown from West Virginia, mm-hmm. guy that they picked up on draft and on the offensive line, kind of reminds me of a senior Calamete and, and some yeah. of the roles that they could do, like a Michael Ola, guys that just kind of do some things and hang around. And in the same breath, guys like Derek Kelly on the offensive line is another one I pay attention to. I think he's a guy, and we often overlook in the pass rushers, but Carl Granderson mm-hmm. making a huge leap, and to know passing on what is his role going to be. So I think there's so many players, obviously, that you can get excited over and be able to see, and I'm just happy to see it all come to, to fruition when we uh, on Thursday. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's right there, right around the corner. And uh, everybody should be following along with John throughout training camp. Once again, at John J. Hendricks on Twitter and all the great work over at Saints News Network as well. John, I appreciate you so much for taking the time to come through here on Locked on Saints, man. Would love to have you back if you've got the time right around training camp and throughout training camp to get your uh, updates throughout. But always such a pleasure to talk with you, man. And I always have a blast when we can do it. Definitely, man. Appreciate you having me, man. And, uh, and likewise, if there's anything I ever do for you, just let me know. But I'm happy to come back anytime you need me. Appreciate you, brother. Right back at you. We'll be seeing you soon. And y'all, don't stay, don't, don't stay too far away from John. Once again, make sure you follow him on Twitter at John J. Hendricks. Keep up with all the fantastic work. We'll be seeing him again here soon. Yeah, and I'm sorry, guys, on on game days, if I spoil everything, if I think I'm from the future and stuff. So I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. It's just how I work. I, hey, you got to get it done, man. Just you mute me. Just, just mute me on game just days. <laughs> if you don't want the alerts early, just throw that mute. All right, y'all, coming up on tomorrow's episode, more previews going into training camp. Camp gets started on Thursday. So for our Wednesday episode, it's all training camp all the time, getting you ready for everything you need to know ahead of the first day of camp. And so we've got a ton to go through as well as, of course, all the news and notes of the day and potential bonus episodes going through as well. Since I'm out of town, some of these are pre-recorded, so I'm going to make sure that you're getting all the updated information, even if that means getting you two episodes in a day. Not a problem at all. Happy to do it. So we've got a ton coming up all throughout the week here. So make sure you keep it locked here on Locked on Saints. And don't forget to go and make yourself some money as well and check out the Locked on Bets podcast. Everything you need to know around betting odds, including wrong team favored, locks for the day, everything that you need to know, your daily sports betting podcast over at Locked on Bets, wherever you get your podcast. We'll be back with you tomorrow. As always, you can find me on Twitter at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how your mom and them and trust you that nation. I'll holla at you.